Sure as hell. Alright, here we are. Episode two. Mm -hmm. I got it. First time on video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here, we're live. I gotta remember not to back up because not only am I gonna be off the frame, yeah. but I'm gonna be off the mic. Just gotta be in there. Okay, not only are we on camera, but like we need to explain oh. this. Because like people can see this now. <laughs> We're in our studio. <laughs> yeah. The high rise in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah, so that's our Twitter. You probably I don't know if you can read it from the camera, but it's at the day state. We are a company, we are a franchise. Yeah. We're serious. Okay. I think we'll be able to explain our profile picture. Nah, we don't have time for that crap. We don't? If, if once, once we get enough people like, to give a rat's tail, no? we're running. Okay. So how's everyone's week? Nate, I made an exam today. Oh yes, it's been a terrible week. I drive eight hours to Florida and I'm a Top of Florida. Top of Florida. It's, it's going to be a long weekend. So. Yeah, I need to talk to you about that exam later. Um, Dreamville is coming soon. Dreamville's coming to Raleigh. Very, very excited for that. That set list got released. Um, and I bought, I, I told you I bought my tickets yeah. like way, way back, you know, when, as soon as they got released, it was like, it was a pretty penny for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very excited for, for the outcoming for, for April. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking, it's in April, I'm thinking that we might be able to, to sneak our way in there. You like, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I can, I can hear Draco from our door. <laughs> really? So it's like, it was loud. Yeah. You can just stand outside. Yeah. That's going to be great. Do you see that Dream Vault is making the Creed 3 soundtrack. Did y'all see that? Really? I thought yeah. it was just a guy from Dreamville. I think it's multiple. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Anyway. All right, well, we, the movie we're doing today, we just watched. Fresh, like this is the freshest that it could possibly be. You're not spoken a word. Usually, we would have a longer intro, mm -hmm. especially how we don't really talk about stuff now when we see each other. Wait for the, for, save it for the pod. But I think we are all itching to talk about this movie. Yeah, for sure. I want your reactions. I don't really have, I just want to hear what you think. All right, can, can you pull up um, who was directed by No Stars? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull and, and pull up the, uh, the summary of it. Absolutely. Man, but what a, like, what a, what a ride that was. This, this is why I was, like, blown away. I, I gave it a 9 out of 10 first watch. Really? I was like, there's no way I'm gonna give this a nine, right? And I just kept thinking, like, it, it's like, it is. Like, I, I just can't not. Like, it doesn't deserve a lower score. Okay. Director, hold on, I pulled up the letter box. Basic. It was, it was an up and down ride for me. Absolutely. It was, yeah, it was everywhere for me, too. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it, it, it had me in some spots, it didn't have me in others, but, man. All right. Let's so, the director is Paul Verhoeven. And this is important. I made a note of this. The writer is, it was written by a guy named Joe Esterhaas. And it stars Michael Douglas, Sharon Stone, and George Dunza. I think is how you say it. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is Gus. Okay. Yeah. Love Gus. Gus is the Yeah, is great. great Gus, character. Gus was the comedian. I, yeah. I knew Gus was going to go at some point. And just to be clear, spoiler warning, like we are not holding back. You know, like we are we are going all for it. Yeah. Gus, great character, off rip, like mm -hmm. amazing character. Um, throughout the whole like beginning part, he kept calling him cowboy, and it wasn't until like yes. an hour or an hour and fifteen in we see him in a cowboy hat and his boots with his spurs. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. I'm glad you brought that up because we're calling Nate Cowboy. Yeah, the remainder of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Um, I mean, yeah. Well, let's. First scene. Yeah, start wow. right. Uh Erotic, one would say. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Like, it's supposed to shock you. It's, it's right out of the gate, you know? Don't, like, don't show your children. That's no. Sure. Yeah. No. I, I love movies that do that, like, right out of the gate, they'll snag you. I think Babylon, like, it's, like, it just locks you in from the rip. And that movie had me locked in from the second that it turned on, you know? Yeah. And maybe that says something bad about my character. So be it. But I was, I was, I was into it like since it started. You know, like, I was, I was all over that movie. I, I differ a little bit. It didn't initially suck me in because I mean, I mean, you hyped it up, and it's not your fault. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sure we hyped up bodies, bodies, bodies. But I knew something crazy was gonna happen. Wouldn't just be a first sex scene and cut to like introduce these characters. Um, we'll get into this a little later. 
But the whole, at what point, no, let's get into it now. At right. what point is a movie a porno uh, with, with a little too much dialogue? I don't know. See, see, I was going to talk about that is, right, realistically, the only time that Catherine and Nick actually spoke to each other and actually revealed things were after they had sex. Like, yeah. and it, it's almost like the movie needed them to have sex for that dialogue. Yeah. Like, it was, it was, it, it got a little much at one point. Well, like I would say like, that the sex moved the plot along. The sex moved the plot. Therefore, it can't be pornographic, like a porno, because... That's the, the thing. Sex moves the plot. But like, like, there's a reason for it to be there. If if you're gonna like have the sex, like realistically, what it was is like there were two sex scenes, like mm -hmm. genuine or I guess three, like genuine sex scenes. Mm -hmm. But they had sex and had dialogue five plus times. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's like it was it was getting to a point where it was like you know they had sex off like off camera, I guess mm -hmm. is how you could say it. And then it just cuts right to the dialogue, or right to the fireplace, or right to the windowsill, like wherever they're cuddling, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but you're right, like the sex did move the plot along, and like, I don't know. Like, think about how Nick and Beth, Nick and Catherine, Catherine and, remind me his name, Boz. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody was kind of intertwined through sex, which was like really, really. Interesting. I've never really seen anything like that before. Like it was just like a whole spider web, like a sexual spider web. But I don't know. Let's get let's get away from the sex. Maybe right? we should start talking about like the actual mystery aspect of it. Because we had some, a slight confusion moment like during the movie where I felt like JC was a little bit behind. I don't know. Oh like, right. For like, for sure. Yeah. Like, and I was like, you should know this. Whenever whenever there were names getting switched up, right? Like okay. whenever it was some like somebody else's name, I was like, what is going on? And then Did you get it though? Did you get the clarification? I don't okay, Beth's husband. That's the only place okay, I'm okay. The with. clarification was Elizabeth Garner uh -huh. was her name. She was a psychiatrist of the police department of San Francisco. Okay. Uh, played by uh, Triple Horn. Uh, she she changed her name from what was it? She was Beth Garner before she was Lisa, Lisa. Hoberman. Yeah. And Lisa and Beth are both nicknames for Elizabeth. So it's the same first name. Oh. Elisa Beth. Okay. Uh, there's three syllables in it. I didn't get that. And then it's the, the just changed the last name because she gets married. Okay. And then she married a doctor in Salinas, California. So when Michael Douglas goes back to Cali back to Salinas and starts asking questions about Dr. Um, Garner since he's been dead for like five, six years, he got shot in his driveway or something. Yeah. And the cop's like, why the same questions that this other cop asked like a year ago from your same department? And it was, uh, what was his name? Uh, goodness gracious. Oh, I know Nilsson. Nilsson. Nilsson, yeah. Nilsson. And Nilsson died. And then Michael Douglas suspects that uh, Garner does it so because she's covering up what Nilsson was investigating. Got it. So, so why, was, why was Nelson investigating? Okay, Nelson was investigating because he was given fifty thousand uh, dollars for Michael Douglas's file from Catherine Chamel. What? Fifty thousand dollars to him for the file, and then he started investigating because he's internal affairs. He's investigating police officers, yeah. and he doesn't like Michael Douglas anyway. Yeah. Okay. So okay, he, so it's just, just, just a whole rabbit hole. But the thing is, is that little portion isn't necessarily a whole. You have to figure it out for yourself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. My so her name wasn't originally Elizabeth. It was just Lisa, right? In the movie. Yeah. It's Beth. It's Beth Carter. And then it's in college, what was it? Lisa Hoberman. Lisa Hoberman. And then she switched it back. No. Because she, she was Beth. Well, Elizabeth. Elisa. She's always Elizabeth. She went by Lisa in college, and then when she oh, got okay. married, she okay, got okay, 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 okay. Alright. Cool. Yeah, that's another thing. So, in college, right, mm -hmm. we are completely convinced at one point that Catherine is crazy, mm -hmm. and that she is like dyeing her hair, doing this and that, and then switches, and then we was like, okay, it's Beth. You know, Beth is the one that's doing it. And the thing is, is Whenever it was, the movie did a very, very, very good job of convincing me that it was that it was Beth carrying everything out because Beth had really? a tie. Yeah, for, I was like, wow. I was like, wow. And I kind of wish, I kind of wish it was her. I feel like that would make it way cooler. Well, I feel. I, oh, okay. I had a totally different. Yeah, so did I. So did I. I. 
the first watch, I was like, I was, because from the beginning of the movie, it's like, this is Catherine. You watch, you literally watch Catherine kill bots. Like, it looks like the same person. Well, yeah. Like, you, you never see directly in her face, but you basically see the same body that you see the rest same of Same body, movie. but I did, once the wake started came, coming in play, I was like, okay, that hair was totally in the first scene. I, it, it's like, the whole movie's supposed to drill into your head that she's guilty, because even, I wrote this down, in the first scene, uh, that you see her at her beach house, they're asking a question, and she's like, I don't care about this dude. Like, she's acting like killed. She acts like with general disdain for human life. Yeah. But that's, and then that's she's the thing. toying with everywhere. She goes to the police station without yeah. any underwear on. Yeah. You know? She's like yeah. toying with everybody. Passes and the lie detector test. I was first like, yeah, this person's totally guilty. But, and but then perfect the alibi. I know, but but that's the thing, is like Beth, like like mm -hmm. the movie is it's like the for me how it was is it's, the movie is trying to convince me it's Catherine. Okay? Mm -hmm. With the books with the police station, with the innu innuendo, with whenever she's like, I'm writing a book about a detective, falls mm -hmm. for the wrong girl. And that, I'm like, okay, they want me to think it's her. And then Beth comes in and she has a tie to Boss and to Nilsson uh -huh. and to, um, uh, to Catherine. And I'm like, okay, it has to be. And then whenever Catherine is in the the high rise with Gus, mm -hmm. whatever Gus, why, like why was she there? No, I, why was she there? I to, I have a totally. I, I'm with you at the end of the movie. I'm talking about the beginning, where it's trying to beat you over the head that Catherine is guilty. Oh, for and sure. You just have to. So we're on the same page, except when it kind of turns and it's trying to make uh, Beth look guilty, but then she's like, uh, she goes Michael Douglas, or who's Nick in this movie? She's mm -hmm. like Nick. She get in your head like she's totally got you wrapped around her finger, and she's like making you convinced that I'm like, are you kidding? And that whole scene where he's thrown out of her apartment, yeah, like that, you really like, think I could kill somebody? My reaction there was, she, that's right, like yeah. absolutely, you, she got you, like you've been hooked, she like did. you had sex with this woman, and now you're hooked, dude, like, Catherine, you, dude. That was my, I was like, stay strong, like said, that was absolutely Catherine. Yeah. That was my reaction. So you're saying you immediately thought it was Beth? So as soon as Beth came into play, I was like, wow. Really? Yeah, for sure. I like, was in denial until the magazines came out, like that she was. Uh, I didn't really get that. I didn't really get this. When they searched, okay, there's actually I read a theory online about this. When they search Beth's apartment, you find the gun. Mm -hmm. You uh -huh. find all which, those, was, which all was uh, was planted. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it could have been the it lock. Have been. The lock was broken. Yeah. The lock was broken, so it yes. might have been planted. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so like, you have so you I, have the gun that not okay. It was a 38, so not only did it kill. Um, Nilsson, but it also killed Dr. Garner. The same gun killed both people. Yeah, 38. The 38. Oh my god. And gosh. all the books, all the books were there. The lock was broken. And it yeah. seemed like she was stalking Catherine. That's where I was like, okay. Oh. She's obviously been involved here. Alright, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you know if um Blonde Girl? Catherine's mm -hmm. parents died before or after she graduated college. I think, it said, I think it's or said. after she wrote the book. That's what I was curious. No, they died before the book she said. It. But but college. I think she it was college for her, if I remember correctly, was seventy nine to eighty three or something like that. Uh, graduated. Yeah, graduated eighty three. And I think it said her parents like died in like eighty one. That's what I want to say. Um, I could be wrong. Could be. Uh, but that would lead me to believe. That That's these, a traumatic experience that led her. Uh, no. But at least we believe that these two girls, Catherine Jamel and Lisa Hoberman, were college roommates and started colluding with each other in college as freshmen as they met and like became in like lovers. Mm -hmm. The freshmen in college got together, planned out some devious stuff, and then carried it out throughout the rest of their lives. See, this is what I, I think the Indians ambiguous. Oh yeah, it absolutely Dude, is. That's just my idea. That's the thing. Like, there's no way that you can know exactly. I think I think they both murdered someone. Like separately or together? Lisa and Kat. I think they do it together. I think, think, think they do it together. Uh -huh. I want to say they both played with the trope of she was copying me in college. No, she was copying me in college. Mm -hmm. So they're two separate killers, and they just use the same uh, alibi. Either or, but but the way Catherine made it look by framing it mm -hmm. was was that because the whole thing was she's got an alibi, she's got an alibi. It's the perfect alibi. Yeah. yeah. But the alibi is she stalked me. 
Oh, okay. So she's using that as an alibi and frames Beth, but then the eyes pick. I don't know. What about whenever Beth, right? They are they are fresh out of the. I think it was the psychiatric session, maybe or yeah. Whenever mm -hmm. Nick is getting questioned, right? Mm -hmm. Beth walks in. Is like I was with Nick last night. I was there. He was drinking. He was by himself. Okay, he was there. I watched him. And then they walk out together, give each other a kiss. And as Beth is getting into the car, and Nick is walking back inside, she's smiling, right? As soon as Nick back, Nick's back turns, she goes like, mm -hmm. American Psycho. See, I, I didn't think too much of that because we're going to keep smiling after. It's, it, 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 I felt it's genuine. Bit I mean... It was intentional, but like, they that was, I don't know if they wanted you to read it that much to it. That yeah. was another thing where I was like, damn. Yeah. Like, that could be one of those things where it's like, I don't know. That like that isn't is like another factor that I was like, damn, like she could have, mm -hmm. like she can be the one. Okay, but also, all of Catherine's books have come true, mm -hmm. right? And Nick wanted the the her last book to end. They live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. So is that what happened? Is that that's why she didn't kill him, or? That's a good question. Because that's what I thought. No, because she, the book was already done, and he died in the book. It's not right. confirmed, though. I guess. I guess not. It could be because her. Ah, she wouldn't have that ice pick down there, just chilling, just in case. And she my theory, that like this. He was. In my theory, if they're colluding together, if her par like partner in crime dies, stuff has automatically changed, and now we're like, okay, she's lost without like she has this. So do you think that they were together? Beth and Catherine were so together. They were, I was like, I'm with freshman roommates. Why were and like they started like they were, they were roommates. They were roommates. Her I roommate, know that. her roommate yeah, died of leukemia. You don't remember that? The, the guy, the guy walked in and said, yeah, I, got, yeah, yeah. "I got, I got confirmation on." Her roommate's dead. Okay, you're right. You're right. Wait, but so they could have friends at freshman. I guess. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know why. Okay. Oh, here's the other thing. I thought about this. So you know how Gus said he was calling, why does Gus get killed? Gus was calling all the college roommates of these two girls. And somebody and found out. And heard I was trying Beth, to get in touch Beth with her. Catherine heard that these people, when Gus was calling around, that he has to die because he's got to figure out what happened because these people know that we were together. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like we hated each other, which, which is the way, whoever was a stalker, they're going to find out that we were together, we were friends, and we like were lovers, essentially, and then Gus has to die. You guys are doing a great job convincing me of this. Otherwise, why would you kill the us? And why, why, yeah, why, why would us have to die? And why would Catherine kill um, Beth's husband? Why would um, say that one time? Why would Catherine kill Gus's husband? Maybe Catherine did. Catherine write a book about that. Mm, why did Catherine kill Gus's husband? It was the same gun that they found. Gus had a husband? No, why was that? Beth! 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 Oh, Beth's husband. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm back. Okay, uh, <laughs> did, did I? Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so why would Catherine kill Beth's husband? Yeah, that's a great, that's a good point. I think they're both murdered. So you think that I don't know if they're together or not, but I think they're both blicking. Maybe Beth was trying to get away from that life and with her husband and then Catherine's like, nope. Could be. Leave him Hold on. Why did Roxy die? Uh, because Beth didn't care. Beth didn't care. Roxy, Roxy Beth, Beth was trying to the, the bridge. Yes. Beth Beth was trying to get away from that life. But do you think there's any Beth? Yeah. Why else would Beth she get away from Roxy? Beth yeah, so so why would she, why would Beth care if, if Catherine had somebody else in her life? Uh yeah. Like, that's why. Oh, but then Roxy was crazy about Catherine, too. Yeah. All right, listen to this. Beth has an obsessive personality. That switches from Catherine to Nick. Mm -hmm. and, and Nick's obsessed with Catherine. Yes. <sighs> Roxy's obsessed with Catherine. Right. Yes. So love hexagon. Yeah. And then... I don't really, I forgot where I was going with this. Beth, no, Beth, I, I like this because yeah. I didn't thought about it. Yeah. 
Beth does go from obsessing over Catherine to obsessing over Nick. And, and that's why... So this is obsessed with... This is why Nick is roped into this whole thing. Yeah. Nick is a separate entity entirely. He's just a cop with a troubled past. Yeah. Until, because if they're together, it makes more sense even. Because Catherine likes to write books and make them come true. Right. And uh, Beth is working at the police station with this guy that she's obsessed with. Yeah. And because she's obsessed with this guy, Nick... He just got unlucky. He just got lucky getting involved with these two women who know each other, who rope stuff into their obsessions, and they kill them. Yeah. I so. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the and the freaking podcast. That's it. And Skyler or Roxy. Yeah. Roxy is not involved because Beth doesn't care about Roxy. Yeah. Yeah. Beth doesn't. Beth. Beth has no no, no need to care about Roxy whatsoever. Yeah. That has to be. I really think that's it. That, that you're right, because they, they had to have been together at some point, right? Mm -hmm. We saw the graduation photo. They were together at some point. Mm -hmm. But let's say that Beth was trying to get away, got married, mm -hmm. Catherine was like, nope. And then and then Beth was like, started becoming obsessed with Nick. Roxy's obsessed with Catherine. Mm -hmm. Why would Beth care about Roxy if she was trying to get away from Catherine? She doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So, so Nick just got insanely box. unlucky. Because I, I was thinking about that like midway through. I was like, like why would Catherine choose this guy? Like what like why would Catherine care about this guy? You know? And it's just like random. She's like there's there was literally no connection before he got assigned to the boss case. Like yes. that's literally it. And so after Nick got assigned to the boss case, he's literally just like since since the first interaction they had, he's had eyes for her for sure. Mm -hmm. Like he's oh, had yeah. eyes for her. Oh, and they make that clear. Yeah. yeah, they make that clear. Yeah. And then in the back of the cop car, and like whenever she's being questioned, she's oh my gosh, like that, that is just wild. That was crazy. Like actually insane. I I don't know. One that she did that, and two that they put that in a movie. And she was on camera. Wasn't she on camera and whenever she was being questioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. She just flashed that shit for the free. What are they going to do? Put me away from nudity? They might. <laughs> <laughs> mom. But the Catherine's manipulation people. So if Catherine is manipulative and Beth is obsessive, that's the combination that fuels the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. Okay, but where does the title Basic Instinct come in? Okay, I got that one. That has more to do with Catherine. It's Catherine's Basic Instinct to do that. Well, it's not only Catherine's. Catherine is feeds off men's basic instinct of just the sexual desire. Yeah. Catherine's like, if I make people feel good, make people feel good about themselves, make people like me, like sexually, I can do whatever I want. I can smoke in the buildings. I don't have to wear clothes. I can, I can commit crimes. Mm. I can do whatever I want if I can just manipulate people into feeling a certain way. Mm. And then Nick, kind of, I don't know if. It, you can debate this. Halfway realizes it and halfway succumbs to it. Just like this woman like is very aggressively going yeah. after me. And he liked that. He liked he it. Says, and he also But he also will, will, would have told you, I think, if you could interview this character, he said, no, this is how I'm investigating. Like I'm like he, he said in the movie, like I'm thing. that I'm doing poli his police investigation by sleeping with the right. the suspect. Um, yeah. And you also see that aggression with his intercourse with Beth that mm -hmm. whole time. Yeah. So like that's what he kind of likes. Yeah. You see an instinct come out. Yeah. Wow. Nick's character really reminded me of Insomnia. You seen Insomnia? Mm -hmm. It's a De Niro. Who was in Insomnia? It's De Niro, right? No. It's Pacino. Al ah, Pacino. It completely reminded me of his character in Insomnia. You know, did Slowly going crazy. Just getting like. See, but but it's like it's a cop and he has that cop mentality, yeah. but like he gets roped into a case and it's just... You could almost say that Nick is getting more genius though, not more crazy, because he's like, un he's uncovering stuff in a he's weird like, way I play the game. of being the most like immoral cop ever, of like yeah. totally getting kicked off the force, getting expected to murder and then sleeping with the suspect. Yeah. He's learning way more information than he could, like mm -hmm. than Gus does, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting because he's almost getting smarter. Yeah. As I mean, he becomes self aware. He's like, I, okay, I. He did it. Because Catherine straight up tells him. He's like, I, in the first scenes of the movie, she's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm writing a novel, which all my novels come true, about a detective who falls to the wrong girl and then I kill him. And you're the main character. And you're the. I'm basing the character I'm, on you. Yes. Yeah. And that's what she tells him. And then Nick 
just because she's an attractive woman, and halfway because I think he, this is how he's going to solve the case. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll play that game. But wouldn't wouldn't Catherine do the same thing? Isn't Nick doing what Catherine would do? Yeah, like on purpose. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Which so, is like, I mean, he got there. Like realistically, he solved it, but he lost Beth. Gus, his job for a little while, mm-hmm. and I mean, I guess he got Catherine. Did, did what is that? Like, and then they go on a cliffhanger. Did he really like, get her, or did she kill him? Yeah, she killed him. I mean, like five minutes later. And and he, and the whole police, she, and all the police think that it was Beth. Yeah. That, the whole like that they're like, okay, well, no, I, guess, I, guess you know, really I guess you don't really know. I guess you don't really know. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I don't, I can't even remember the exact timing. Mm-hmm. But I think it sh- she heard him turn around, cause you saw her go to grab the 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 um, ice oh, for sure. And then he like turned back around, came back around. Mm-hmm. And she looked and over. She, like, yeah, and she, and she played back. it off, played it off as a kiss. Right? Yeah, played it off as like, cause they were literally just talking about what was it, having sex like minx or whatever like mm-hmm. that. And then I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know. You never heard that expression? What does mm-hmm. it mean? Minks are little rodents that oh, apparently okay. the expression they have sex all the time. Oh yeah, because rodents like spread like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I wanted to bring this up. Where ice picks, like having an ice pick in your kitchen, that common? And yeah. I have no idea. I've never ice actually had just like one that big of a thing. Two dollars at Kmart? Really? And everyone had one. Yeah. Everyone Maybe it was like a cool thing to drink, you know, liquor with. I mean, that's what yeah. Captain thinks. I don't know. I, I didn't. I, I had never ever heard that before. Like, what year is coming out? 89? 92. 92. You it up? Yeah. 92. I mean, yeah. Ice machines should be around. Are, right. are in fashion. Well, that's what he asked. You want to use ice cubes? She said, I like rough edges. Yeah, but everyone had it, though. I know. He had one, too. Well, I guess he got one because of her. I don't think... I, I really don't think everybody had one in this in this thing. We saw a lot of them. We did see a lot of them. And it had to be a different... I don't. I think. I think it was literally just her, and then he yeah, got yeah, one because yeah. of her. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah. And uh, I'm also trying to think of connection between Catherine and Ice Picks because she didn't use the same one. The Boz murder, it got taken for evidence. Mm-hmm. The Gus, uh, Beth, Gus, Gus murder got taken for evidence. Yeah. And she had a third one. Yeah, I didn't so understand. I'm trying to think. I'm just trying to make. Conne- and she had one in her kitchen. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be really interesting to see if that was the same one to run it back. And see if it was the same one. The the kitchen. one that I think the one that that Nick had in his kitchen. I think it, it was probably a different one. That would be cool to see if it was the same one. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, here's the issue. I don't think they so. They said in the movie that the one, the first murder, the boss mm-hmm. murder. They says like it's this generic one you buy at Kmart. Yeah. And then when Nick, when she, when he starts shopping his eyes, when she's over, he says it's like dollar sixty nine at Kmart. Yeah. So he's like, I bought the generic one that you bought. Hmm. And also the way she handles it, like she like tosses it from the yeah. hand, like oh, I think she knows what she's doing. She might flip it once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So during whenever Gus and Beth died, right? Mm-hmm. And they find a San Francisco Police Department jacket and a wig in the stairwell. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't understand that at all. It's supposed to be Frank Beth. Beth. Beth and uh, uh, impersonating Catherine. Yeah, but who who like I really think what actually was it? I think I personally think Catherine threw on the wig. Yeah. And because because she one she planted all that stuff in Beth's house. Yeah. So she could have grabbed the the jacket. Yeah, for sure. And she put on the wig, dropped it, went straight to her house, and planted the rest of the stuff. Or she planted it beforehand because the door was unlocked always. Then, and then, then Adam and then Beth was actually there to meet Gus. Then who killed Gus? Kath- I think Catherine. So 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 okay. you think that Catherine murdered Gus <laughs> and then dropped the stuff in the stairwell and then went and planted the stuff right away? Or it could have been pre-planted. But, but but you think that Catherine had the jacket and the wig on and killed Gus with the jacket and the wig on? Mm-hmm. Why does she need a blonde wig on? So she can so she drop it and then be like, oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, here's my question. Do you think Catherine 
is like, because we think you have to have this little partnership between the two college friends. Yeah, I keep going back and forth. I don't know. Do you think Catherine is breaking up like the little connection they have, or do you think this has all just gone wrong and Nick accidentally shoots? Or Nick, not accidentally, Nick shoots one of them, and then all of a sudden, like, the partnership broke up because Nick killed one of them. And that's why Beth decides not to kill him? Yes. Mm. Or not Beth, but Catherine. Carrie and Catherine. But is it, is it that Catherine's breaking this up and that's why Beth dies? Or if it's just Nick kills Beth? I think Nick's definitely messing something up. Has to be, right? Yeah. That's true because... Catherine, he should have died at the end, right? As soon as Beth, as soon as Beth died, Catherine shows up, said, I heard about what happened. Uh-huh. And, like, throws herself back at him. After being, like, after being cold and being like, nope, book's done, see you later. Mm-hmm. Was there any connection between Beth and um, uh, Nielsen? Yeah, she was the- Sorry, Catherine Nielsen, Catherine Nielsen. Other than the fact that she paid him to get the file. She paid him? Uh-huh. When, when, at, when in the timeline did she do that? Early. Way before, like, they said there's three months before the movie started. Yeah. Um, Why? Wait, what? That makes Catherine, no sense. Catherine paid N- Nielsen Three months before the movie started for Nick's file. Yeah, that makes no okay. sense. No, no, no. I, this place works. Sense. What, what makes sense about it? How how did she know where Nick is? How did Catherine know that yes, Nick? She does. How did she know that? Oh, Nick? from oh, from the shooter, from the shooting, from the shooting. But how how does she know that? Beth? Beth? I think they know each other. But how, but how? also but also the um the the magazines the shooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does Catherine know that Nick is going to be put on Boz's case? How does Catherine know that Nick is going to be the one coming to her door and asking about the, the murder? This is all from Beth, because Beth is the cop, or not cop, the psychologist studying Nick because of the, the shootings. So in my theory that they're working together, it makes the most sense because Catherine can know all this stuff through Beth. And then Catherine's like, I mean... Not, not three months before a murder, though. Beth can't know three months before a murder who's no. going to be assigned. No, 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 no. He's going to be assigned, but just about him. And he's a, he's a detective so, on the force, isn't it? I, I, mean, it, I guess it, can, it can't be a huge... So like, it, like, if like this huge guy gets murdered, it's like the, the main detective is going to be put on it. I guess that's... She um, also knows she's going to kill him. It's like, it's very much pre-planned. Like years of advance, they say. So in the the restaurant where Gus is eating chili or whatever, mm-hmm. he <laughs> says, so uh, Nielsen had uh, a separate account or whatever with $50,000 down payment in it. Um, we don't know where it came from. And Nick's like, okay, that came from Catherine. Catherine paid Nielsen to get his file so Catherine could learn about him. But it was all like a facade, kind of, to tell, to show Nick, because if she she could know all she wanted, just do Beth, because mm-hmm. Beth would give her whatever she wanted, in my theory. But she needed to make it look like she didn't know Beth. Yeah, she had. Yeah, that's true. So because she pays Nielsen for the file. Wow. Okay. So Beth gave the file to Nielsen. Nielsen, Nielsen gives, it gives it to Catherine. Catherine. Sells it to Catherine. Wow. I don't. I that. And that's why wow. Nelson investigated, and he was figuring this stuff out, and then he got murdered. Wow. Yeah? Wow. Because he was investigating at UCLA and at Salinas. So, Nielsen got murdered for what, though? For figuring out that um, Beth had killed, or was he should have been a suspect in her husband's murder. Got it. Okay. Huh. Therefore, it makes sense that these two are in the other. So, her, yeah, got, so yeah. Beth killed her husband? Like Siamese mm-hmm. twins. Beth or Catherine working together. Killed one, them, one, one. Like, one. Kill like both or separate, doesn't matter. Okay, that, for the name change? For the name, well, we talked about how it could be because it's all kind of speculative. Why, does, why does she have to get married in the first place? It, because, it, again, I'm saying, knows, but yeah. it's all about like these two people were at college together, were together thinking of doing this stuff, for instance, killing your parents. And then other, you know, murder stuff. And then Beth goes off and gets married, but it doesn't last very long, and shortly ends in his murder. I don't know if that's like Beth was like, I don't like this, and like I'm gonna go back to Catherine. Or yeah, and I mean Catherine had somebody else too. She had that boxer, yeah, right? She did. What was it, Vinny? Uh, maybe. Uh, is this 
Something like that. Name, yeah. Um, Iron doesn't matter. Um, that's funny because when, especially when they're at the beach house, mm-hmm. I don't know why I thought this, but I was like, what if there's a twin? Yeah. What if there's a twin? Bro, when I first saw uh, Roxy, Roxy, I was like, dang, they look kind of similar. Look yeah, you. yeah. She was something else. See, what about, um, go ahead. The end was like, the end, because I knew so there's no way that they just end this with um, Beth being the killer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, so when is Catherine going to reveal that she was a part of it somehow too? Yeah. The ending was good because it goes dark. It, sh- it comes. But the thing is, is the thing is, is they're in bed and they're hooking up, and it's like going down, like like to see if she was rich or something. And the screen goes dark for like two seconds, and then it comes right back on and shows the. Ice so I like it for this reason, the ending, because in the, the previous scenes where she tells him to leave, like the book's over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she both is mean to him because like I don't need you anymore. Book's over. Get out of here. But she also, a- after you watch, like, huh. She could have been in that moment, like, like this is the point where I should kill you, but like I don't want to. Should just get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. But when she comes back to his apartment right before the, uh, she's very vulnerable and she like, cries and she very sad. She's like she's not mean, but she comes back after the book's finished. But then she's like, oh, is this the time where she kills him? But then, and, and in between that time is when Beth died. Yes. So it, you don't really know which yeah. one it is. Yeah, you don't know like what the like what the kick is, you know, like like what gets her to be like to come back to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was super super. I, I think I think that the ending like did Whoa. had had so much good stuff. Well, gears are turning. Whoa. Hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. This is this is this might be my final theory. Mm-hmm. Nick broke up what Beth and Catherine had, or Nick, at least Nick broke up what Catherine, Catherine's killing spree. He broke that up, and the end of maybe one of her books or something, maybe like the final straw was Catherine killing, framing Beth so she could completely get off the case. Mm. So she stabs Gus because she's not afraid to kill anyone. Mm. She stabs Gus knows that her prince will be on the ice pick and, s- and takes the ice pick and washes it off and brings it with her because she's coming straight from the scene. Wait, wait, wait. And plants another ice pick down a for a day different. because do you remember what she just said about the book? Mm-hmm. And what did she say about her book? And who died? She said somebody always have to, has to die. Yeah, yeah. And Gus And Gus is the fuse of the tech- Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. That has to be it. Yes. That has to be it. Because she came straight straight from there. She came she came yes. straight from killing Gus. <laughs> Nick oh, went down to the station. Yeah. Nick went down to the station. She gets she, all the stuff was already planted. She had the she had the jacket. Oh my gosh. And so her her reaching down, no. No, her reaching down was making sure it wasn't in plain sight. Because they already they already had sex. Her clothes were already off, right? Like when would she have put it down there? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. She put it like under the That's where it gets uh, That was so good for like Well I mean like I I don't understand what y'all were like just thought you were covered. I was I was lost for a second. You were, you like already assumed that? Yeah, well I don't understand what's why is it important that there's two ice picks? That well because she stabbed Gus with the uh, with one. Yeah, and, and they found one on the stairs with blood on it. Yeah, and she could have freaking did whatever with it. Like sure. put blood all over it. But she had to take the one that she like got her fingerprints all over. Yeah. She was did they wipe them off? Huh? If you I don't know. Well, if it's all bloody, you can't wipe it off. If it's wipe, all bloody, you can wipe fingerprint it off pretty easy, I think. I'm pretty sure. Well, it's no, but, but the thing we were freaking out about is because she said it's about a detective. Oh yeah, yeah. You get that? I never thought that, but that's a very interesting thought. Because now it's 
if is she going to murder Nick is a question. No. Does so she really likes him? Okay. Does she clarify? And her other lover's dead. Mm -hmm. In in the back of the cop car, does she clarify which who is you? I mean, she's talking to Nick, but Gus is right there too. Oh. Gus is right there too. It's about a detective. I'm gonna write about you. Like imagine like it's something so subtle. Like she's looking at Gus instead of Nick during that call. Oh, right. Like respect like, yeah. car. Like yeah. It, it could be something so subtle that like is everything. It could be that that's so much speculation. Mm -hmm. I, I need to watch this again. Mm -hmm. But like man, like that would be crazy. That would be crazy. <sighs> See, is it? You're not supposed to know. Yeah, I, I have to, you, there's no way that there's one answer. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I think we're really reading into it, and this is what makes it fun. But I think like the director was like, I'm going to make a who done it, and we're not going to have did it. Because it, it could very easily just be Catherine. Yeah. Like, it could just be like, oh, very it was her. No, or, or it could be, I it's really these two college roommates together conspiring, or it could be... One of them goes passes away, or one of them gets framed. It can like there can be oh my gosh. I guess it doesn't make sense why Nielsen died if it's just Catherine. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be and her both and her husband and that's yeah. husband. Yeah. So it has to be both of them. Pretty Realistically, hard. it has to be both of them. Those are the two aspects that because it can't be just that either. That don't make sense. Mm -mm. But but it's enough to settle the cops. That's yeah. The thing. Oh yeah, because it, it makes sense. It, it makes, they don't know as much as Nick does. Yeah, more what we know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like Nick mean, literally knows everything. Right. But also the biggest thing, thing is that she was clearing her name by saying, "Oh, it was Beth the whole time," and the cops say that, yeah. and and they're in the room. And then also when Catherine's here, she breaks. Or when yeah, when Catherine's in Nick's apartment, she breaks down and says, "Like this isn't supposed to happen. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to fall for you." Right. Not part of the book. Yeah. We are like going weird. We are displaying a theory, then going back on it, and yeah. going back on it. Going. Let's let's get somewhere where I was really, really confused about for a, basically right. since the character was introduced, Hazel. This is a big misdirect. So what is the, the idea? Is it makes Catherine guilty by proxy? One of the things that Catherine makes her a murderer. Is that she hangs out with a bunch of murderers? Yeah. And not only Hazel is one of them, but Roxy. her college friend, well, Roxy, but her college friend Beth is a murderer. Because mm -hmm. because Beth killed her husband. Yeah. Um, oh. So uh -huh. it's supposed to be like Gus says to Nick, Catherine, the, or your girlfriend is killed. Like only hangs out with murderers. Mm -hmm. So that does that not make her a little bit more hopeful in this? Mm -hmm. Like it's very possible she's the killer. If all her friends are committing murder. And you can even see the way she deals and handles with Hazel. She's like, I'll be right there, honey. Like, kind of treats you like a crazy person. Uh -huh. That's like, she feels the sympathy for her. And you know, she's like, I'll be there, honey. Like, but then Nick is actually playing the way. It's like, she uses these people as subjects and writes about them. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting misdirect, I guess. So, okay. Yeah, that's good. So, whenever it comes to uh, the books that Catherine writes, you know, like she wrote a book about her had like having sex with a rock star and then killing a rock star, mm -hmm. right? And then there was a book before that about her parents dying. Mm -hmm. So she has to, she had to have killed her parents, right? That's the idea. Yeah. Wait, who was the rock star? Boz. Boz. Yeah. yeah, Johnny Boz. He liked his girls. His uh, his cocaine. His cocaine and his. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> so he's our, so she has to have killed her parents. She has to have killed because it was like a, a boy with the airplane, right? Like that was like her. That had that was like her first book. Yeah, yeah. And she changed it to the boat. Yeah. That's what I thought. I and thinking. then the next book was page sixty-seven, whatever they said. Rock star dies. Okay. Okay. So okay. All right. I got it. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're still kind of square one right now. <laughs> we don't know how the movie ends. Yeah, that's what's so cool about this one, though. Like, it's a very well written movie. For sure. See, here's the thing. Here's here's another thing where like, like let's say we're all sitting at a table, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, we're just doing like a table read of this script. Mm-hmm. You know how impossible it would be to sit there and try to comprehend what's going on on the paper. Yeah. You know, like like in like in a in a script format. I think about that all the time. You know, mm-hmm. like how how do movies how do shows like you should watch this movie I watched the other week or the other day. Did you watch His Girl Friday? That movie. Uh, There's like a hundred words in every twenty seconds. Really. There's. People talk so ridiculously fast. That was 40, I was like, right? That was 1940. Yeah. I, I was like, there's no way. Yeah. Like this acting is like unmatched. I've yeah. ever seen it. It's crazy. But That's awesome. Stuff like that does fascinate me. Yeah. Um. So I brought up the insomnia, right? Oh, like I thought that their characters matched up really, really well. Um. I also saw like like how like the most recent Batman movie mm-hmm. could kind of take some inspiration from this movie. Like, a lot. Like, especially, there were two times whenever um, Nick was, like, walking up, like, as a detective, walking up on a scene and, like, looking at a murder. And I was thinking back to, like, in the Batman, whenever he was walking up on the mayor, like, walking through the house, everybody's looking at him, mm-hmm. right? And he's walking through it, up to the body. And then the nightclub scene reminded me of Okay. Um, reminded me of the Batman so I didn't much. Know that at all, yeah, that that, that was just like I don't know. That was just like the most recent thing that was like, oh, like, this is kind of similar. Like that was just like just click, and I was like, I kept seeing stuff. I was like, wow, like that's similar, that's similar, that's similar. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's like way out of way out of park. Yeah, that's that is really interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was something. Um, what other? I'm gonna look up what other movies this guy has directed because I. I know I've seen Tom. I've never seen his name before. While you look that up, I wanted to bring up that Michael Douglas is just about perfect for this role. I mean, he did. He plays. Good. He plays the the dickhead so well. The yep. the rich, like I'm better than you. And I, with that, I wanted to bring up. <laughs> to what extent would you guys be that character that's like borderline rape someone in a movie? Or is that I don't know, but that was crazy. Yeah, though. that was really. It was so fast. It was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it was just like, like, like he just like he just clipped and then bang, rips shit off, grabs a leg, rips literally, and then she and then after she's sitting there like like tries to put her shirt back on, she's like falls off. <sighs> she gets pissed off. She's obsessed. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. obsessed. The Paul Verhoeven did yeah. RoboCop. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen RoboCop either. Where are you gonna say Paul Blart? That'd be hilarious. Also, Wayne Knight was had such a tiny role in this movie. Oh, okay. Why cool. why wasn't he he would have been the guy in the interrogation, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not the perfect been, character for that interrogation. That's though. true, that's what, true. What other movies he in? Jurassic Park. Oh yeah. Um War Games, I think. Is he in War Games? He is a uh, he's a Toy Story 2. He's the voice of uh Yeah, he's Al the Al. voice of Al. Yes. Yeah, Al's Toy Born. That's um, great. Dirty Dancing, Kung Fu Panda, Space Jam. Space Jam, that's Hail Caesar. Um, which was good. Born on the Fourth of July. Cheap by the dozen too. And was what? That, did did I the the two psychiatrists that they brought to Nick, that ball yeah. guy, didn't he look familiar? Yes, that is uh Steven Toblowski. And what is he? Um, he is in a ton of stuff. He also directs a bunch of stuff. He's a memento. He's Sammy Jenkins. I have a Jenkins so. and memento. That's one of your favorites, isn't it? Yes. Oh Top five God. favorites. He's have Groundhog you seen Day. Him? He's Ned Ryan and Groundhog Day. Ned? You've not hey, seen hey, Groundhog Day? Hey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bro, oh, it's man. one of the best ever. Is it not one of the best movies ever made? I love it. That's like close to my top 25 movies, bro. Really? Bro, wow. that movie is amazing. Okay. He is also, um, what else? He also directs stuff, I think. That's great. I, 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 that's awesome. Steven Toblowski. Yeah. I think I'm saying that right. Oh, I wasn't even talking about him, but okay. Yes, I did think he was familiar too. I was talking about, let me look it up. Um, oh, you're talking about the later in the movie, the two seconds? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So like, yeah. it's just them four in a room, the, ball, yeah. the two psychiatrists and Nick. What are their names? Yeah. And she's like, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Oh, James Reborn. He's in the game, and shit enough. Oh, he's in Meet the Parents. He's on. Oh, yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's one of the, uh, the. He's in The Talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, I don't remember him in that. 
Ah, yeah, he is. Uh, uh, like the, 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 I don't remember that. He is a uh, Dickie Greenleaf's dad. Who is? Oh, oh, Muslim, right? Jude Law's dad. Oh, 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 oh. I'm talking about um, Meet the Parents. And in, in Meet the Parents, he is Dr. Larry Banks. I don't know who that is. Probably just a side character. Dr. Larry Banks. My Cousin Vinny. Who is it? My Cousin Vinny. You see My Cousin Vinny? This is awesome. I love it. I love my cousin. I've been to watch it. However. Oh, I've been wanting to watch it. No. Oh, so, man. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, that's so a good funny. one. That's a good one. Yeah. Man. Yeah. All right. Do we, do we, I, I'm, I feel like I have more to talk about. I do too. I feel like the second I would turn this off, I'm going to have something else to say. Yeah. It's not going to be on camera. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't really think there's like a, a theme to this movie, really. I think it's just a really good who done it. Yeah. Like you talk about themes. I always look for themes in movies. That's like my favorite part. I, I, I think struggle to find one here. I, I love how it doesn't all just get revealed at the end, you know? Like, you have to sit there and actually think about it. Because there's so many, like, we, this is the second kind of Uganda movie that, like, we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And, like, well, like, what were you saying about a uh, an all-knowing document? Mm -hmm. Or what, what was the other thing that... Identical twin. It's like, the fact that, ne like, neither of that happened. See how much better made this one was? Yeah, like, for sure. Like, it wise like this one doesn't have social commentary, like so much social commentary, like bodies does. But this one, yeah, two done it version, way better. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah. That's yeah. Mystery movies are difficult to make, and this one was done well. Mm -hmm. For sure. I love how it was in, like it wasn't just another Los Angeles one, you know? Absolutely, and it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like there's a bunch of different suspects you have to like all oh, feel them out and see how different mm -hmm. they are. It wasn't knives out. It wasn't like we talked about last time. It wasn't a clue. It was uh, like you were focused on one person the whole time and at the very end you had a misdirect. Yeah. Um, and it, there's another suspect at the very end. But now we've talked about two whodunit movies. So yeah. we're just going to become a whodunit podcast. No, we definitely got to strip away. Yeah, yeah. So. We, we do need to, I don't know. I, like, I, I, can't, I don't know where we can go. From here, like this is this this is wild cards. Yeah, this is like like I I don't know like if if we can find some people that or if people listen to this that have like actually seen this movie and they're like holy shit that would be that so sick, sick. <laughs> that would be so sick. The only thing that's holding me up on it is what I really like in a movie is when you think about it. Mm. And you can you can piece it together based off your judgment, like an educated guess. Here, I, there's so many different pathways that it could go. I don't know. I want like either this or either this or this could happen. Yeah, this is a very uh, vague and ambiguous. What is the what's the phrase where it's like to interpretation. the flap of a butterfly's wings causes a hurricane? What is that butterfly effect? Yeah, it's like a butterfly effect yeah. thing. So it's like, like we can we can get up to one point. That's what it's called, right? This is not it's fine. It's fine. Like you can get up to one point, right? But like any small thing that you take in a different direction kind of changes completely oh, where yeah, you go. Right. I see. You know, like you have like if it, like let's say we get up to I don't know Beth's husband dying. You know, if we say it was Beth, if we say it was Catherine, that takes you two, com or if we say it was them together, three completely different pathways, and all of that is going to affect all the way, like it's going to take you all the way up into the ending. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is like a very, very special aspect of this movie that I enjoyed a lot because it's like speculation. You know, it can, like you can take it any direction, you know, like just since we've been sitting here, I've found out so much more stuff in my mind like where I thought it like where I thought I was has changed I don't know five times you know so we need to make that what you just said reminds me of the flow chart we did a couple weeks ago we can totally make a flow chart and like what's the most possible path that makes the most yeah. sense without problems now we're tying it this is 340 or, <laughs> or like it makes me want to do like one of those those billboards where you're like all right this connects this connects but ends here but yeah, this connects. With you want to make, you want make a problem, you want to make a mystery like yeah. board. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I want to figure it out. I want to get to the bottom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
So you said you gave it a nine at a time. I like low key, like I don't know. I really like it a lot, and like it's very, like I said, very, very well made movie, very well written. But like something about like not not having a theme makes it feel incomplete to me. I, I feel the same way. It feels incomplete. And and the dialogue was good, but it wasn't great. Like it wasn't other than uh, I thought uh, you got any coke. I got Pepsi in the fridge. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. And whenever he stood up from the psychiatrist and he was like, like he, he named the five things about him. Mm -hmm. That was great. And one of them was like, I look at the toilet whenever I stand up or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, dude, like that was that was. Great. And I don't know if it's Michael Douglas's character. He's like he's kind of dry and cold. He's just a cold. Yeah. Know? It's a lot of cold people, and it, it's hard to like really love it. Like like I said, it's a great movie. Yeah, but I didn't. I liked it. I didn't love it. It also feels somewhat gross. I know it's yeah. gross too, but like yeah. you feel like you're watching a porno a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. There's a little bit too much sex. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like yeah. The, and like there was so like the amount of sex that was in it was like out of like over the top, but like the, I'm not yeah. the, dude, like the cho the choice of an ice pick as the overall murder weapon is yeah. wild. Yeah. Like in that first scene, like it goes like through his. I was like, man, I, mean, yeah, I don't want to see that. Shit. Like, if I asked my mom if she's seen this movie, she'd be like, oh, yeah, why'd you watch that? And there's yeah, so much yeah. sex in it, you yeah. know? And when I like movies, I like to envision if I'm scrolling through TV, oh, I love this movie. I, I, can, put, I can put it on at any point in the movie and enjoy it from there. Can't do that with this Yeah, one. especially when you have a family. Yeah. Yeah. Sit on the couch, somebody walks in the living room. What the? You watch yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's not just language, it's like you have a general, like, uh, this is not safe for other people. Yeah. Like, you can't even throw it on with your friends. Like, what are you watching? I mean, I, like, honestly, I felt uncomfortable watching it with you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's... Really? Yeah. I didn't feel uncomfortable. I, did you see? I kept glancing back at y'all. Like, are y'all laughing? Dude, I was sitting there with my legs and like, I was, I was, I was enjoying the hell out of it. Right? Jason was literally in the seat, like, on his stomach, like, leaning forward. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I thought I, I was hooked. I was hooked the whole time. Yeah. So part of me does want to give it a little lower, give it an eight. Yeah, I, I'm going with like I, four out of five. Eight. I'm on a because this is a rewatch. Yeah. Even though like the mystery aspect even got better, honestly, this time because I viewed, I saw it differently. Yeah. This time, like I saw it as like trying to prove Beth guilty. Yeah. Like, the whole time I was like, all right, let's prove Beth guilty. Oh, right. I didn't want to bring this up. She said something. You started writing notes, and I thought that you were picking up on it. She said something like. I love you to death or something like that. Mm. Something like, um, I'd kill you first. Something like that. Like that was flirtatious, but it had death or killing. I can't remember what it was. Catherine or Beth? Beth. Beth? When was this movie? Early. Early. And really? You, you wrote notes on it. I was like, hmm, is he writing something down important? But then I noticed that you were kind of just writing and stuff wasn't like, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I was really just trying to piece the, what I was writing at the beginning is like how to piece together what they're trying to make you feel about Catherine. Because I think it's really interesting. Because from the get go, they're really trying to paint you a portrait of like how this woman's crazy. Yeah. And it turns out she's not as crazy as you think, even though she's not like, yeah. she's not innocent whatsoever. No, yeah. But she is not as crazy as you think. She's very particular on mm -hmm. um, what she does. Yeah. She's still a crazy bitch, though. Absolutely. So, Did you see my original review for this? Mm -hmm. Like when, it, when I typed well, this? I don't remember. Um, I don't remember, but. So what would you give it, Jace? Realistically, like, or you can be on the side too. Before talking about it, I probably would have given it a nine. Mm -hmm. I have four point five. But now that we've kind of talked about it and kind of gotten it, I'd probably give it an eight as well. Yeah. Like, because I feel like a seven is way too low, but I feel yeah. like a nine is really yeah. up there. But when I didn't have anyone talk about it the first time, I was like, wow, yeah. nine feels really good. Uh, but once you, they lose their magic, their they're kind of stuck at an eight, even if they're yeah, really good. Yeah. You can never really get a true mystery movie that's better than an eight. Like knives out like an eight. But I can, all these great mystery movies are just eights for me. Especially when you know the twist. Yeah. I can totally see how if I didn't have if I was sitting there watching this, I didn't have anybody to talk about it with. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, we didn't if we didn't sit here for an hour and talk about this, it would definitely be a nine for me. Like that was I I was locked in and it yeah. it it grabbed me and did not let me go like the whole time 
Like I, I love that. And I love when movies do that. And I, I know it's not who done it. It's sl- it's different, but that's why Memento for me is a ten. Like yeah. Memento, it doesn't lose its magic to me. Yeah. And it still impresses me every time. Oh yeah. Okay. And, it's like, and it has a message. It has a theme. And so it's way bigger to me than just like a who done it. Yeah, it's way bigger than a mystery. Weird. My dad and talks it, very heavy on Memento that. is one of the most impressive movies that I've ever seen. Straight up. Yeah. It's Nolan, right? Yes. Yeah. It is incredible. Nolan's first. Second. First, first big one. First, he had a short film before. Yeah. Okay. And so it's his, it's his first. Yeah. He was given, I want to say, like a million dollars to make it, and he turned it into like nine million. Wow. And then he was given like twelve million or something. I don't remember the exact number. Give him a little bit more for Insomnia, and turned it into like forty-five million. Hmm. So like, every, so he made three movies before he made. Uh, Have you seen every Christopher Nolan movie? Damn, I've seen one. Ten. No, I've seen ten. Wait. I think maybe I have seen them all. I haven't seen ten. I've seen them all a lot, yes. Prestige? Yeah. Huh. I guess I've seen them all. No, yeah. going along with Tenet is that's another movie like I was saying earlier, that you can really think really hard mm-hmm. and think about how it makes sense. Mm-hmm. I, I think I've told you this before, but um I got I I asked people, how does it make sense? There's so many problems, like, no, there's not. And I'm like, well, what about this? And they explain this, and then mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what about this? It's not fun. I just, I like it, but that is that is too much of a. It's Christopher Nolan. In my opinion, it's Christopher Nolan stepping on line. It's oh yeah, but it's he, too much. It's way too much. His whole style. His, that's his style, and he can lean into it all he wants. Even but Dunkirk like, for me, I, like it took me a really. I think that works in a weird way because of like it's a war movie. No, I I love if that it. was an action movie, but it, would not work. it took me so long for me to be like, okay, now I understand. Now I get uh, where it's all coming. Uh, you know, like. Dunkirk? Isn't that just like four characters that all come together in the end? Dunkirk is like one one story, it takes place over like a week, one story takes place over a day, and one story takes place over an hour. And then it all comes together. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like it it was like it took me so long to figure it out. Because it like skipped around. Yeah. Anyway. But Tenet is like you finally comprehend to a certain extent. Mm how it works, and then the next hour you forget the slightest three details, and it's like, all right, it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's a lot. It's, it's yeah, it's a lot. I have Memento and Tenet both on my list that I need to get around to eventually, but I don't know, we've been busy. Like, that's just Absolutely. that's just the way it is. Like, I can't believe we busted this off. I cannot believe that we did this. Like, I have a, I have a quiz and yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even know what time it is. So. But I, I have a quiz at 9 a.m. Yeah, it's a quiz, whatever. Who cares, right? You don't have to go to Delta. At least I don't have to go to Delta. That's true. I did not, I had a Delta test this morning, too. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. Anyway. Alright. Good work. Good work, Jim. Good Final thoughts. About this. Final uh, thoughts? Final thoughts. I will watch it again one day. For sure. I feel like way down the line in my life, I'll forget about all the sex. And yeah. turn it back on. And I hope I just don't show my kids. Yeah. I think about that all the time. What is what's, what's the main chick's name? name? What's the main chick's name? Catherine. Oh, the actor? Yeah. Sharon Stone. What else is she in that I would know? Casino, but she was terrible. Is it not terrible? Like Is she hot? Not really. I can't she was she, she has a very she, she kinda has a weird career. Very odd career. Kind of like a cult career, mm-hmm. you could say. She was in Total like, Recall too. She's in this mode where like people who love Sharon Stone like love Sharon Stone. Huh. And then everyone else doesn't know who she is. Yeah, um, she she went from attractive to like average. Uh, she has a very odd career, to my opinion. Her hair was weird. Her hair was weird the entire time. Remind me of damn Brie Larson and no. Captain Marvel. Yeah, a little bit. Of one. <laughs> um, I can't believe Asher told us to watch this movie. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Asher, you dirty dog. Shout out to Asher. Shout out to Big Ash. If he ever finishes our first. Episode. Facts. He's so smooth as personal. He hasn't finished the first one? No. Oh man. He said he really liked it though, so. What are the odds of Asher ever hears this part right here? Probably pretty high. Pretty high. So. Yeah, he is, absolutely. He's a dog. Well thanks for that one, Asher. Alright. You ready to sign off? We sign it off. Alright. Leave a comment if you want. Till next time. <laughs> Follow yeah. us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Will's been putting out great content mostly. 
Yeah. Me and JC have not forgotten very much. We, we, me and Nate gavel in on Twitter. It's crazy because you can definitely tell that me I and JC. I tweeted twice today, though. Did you really? Like, yeah. me and J- I feel like me and JC have like opposite Twitter. Pages. I think you guys no, have tweeted sure. about the same thing today. today. I don't know. Did you tweet today? I don't think so. No, me, me and you were all were tweeting on the account at the exact same time. Oh, wow. One time I tweeted an anti Babylon thing, he threw it on the same post, a pro Babylon comment. So we, that was you. We said inject that into my veins. Yeah, yeah, that was him. Oh, that was him? Yeah. Wow. I'm telling you, this is all. You like, had a pro Babylon, I had an anti Babylon. Did, did you see my, my OBX tweet? Yeah, I thought that was him too. You thought that was him? Yeah. I would never watch it. I would never watch that. that no. oh, you said you, you might. Because of her. I mean, that's like that was you. I thought that was you. No, I would never. That was me, dude. I don't like, even think she's that. You I, like, never, I thought you were more up to her than you were. It's like the only reason I would ever watch this is because of her. Hey, bro. I well, we'll, we'll talk bro, about it. The right. show is satirical. The they show is stay, a big joke. It's hilarious. And they yeah. stay on Twitter. The joke is hilarious. There's three of us tweeting, trying to figure out who's tweeting what. Yeah. Yes. YouTube channels up at the day stay. Video is gonna be up. Sign up. <laughs> Let's get it.